So this is Mr. Mulligan. In the 20s and 30s, air racing was the equivalent of NASCAR today. Uh, when this rare plane won the uh, 35 Bendix and Thompson Trophy, it was estimated there were 50, 60,000 people in attendance at Cleveland. So it was a really big deal. And the air racers of the day were celebrities like football quarterbacks uh, are today. And this is a replica of a Howard DGA-6. And the DGA-6 was built in Kansas City, Missouri by Benny Howard and Gordon Israel. And they built this airplane specifically to win the Bendix Cross Country Trophy. The Bendix race was a long distance race that went from California to uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and culminated in the national air races in Cleveland, Ohio. And this airplane was finished, the original was finished in 1934, and it was uh, on the way to the race at 21,000 feet and the pilots became so hypoxic that they lost control of the airplane and uh, descended, woke up, but they were still so impaired that they crashed it on landing. So they loaded it up, hauled it home, rebuilt it, and flew it back to uh, California in 1935. And it won the Bendix Tra Trophy flying nonstop from uh, California to Cleveland and won by 30 seconds beating uh, Roscoe Turner, who was a famous uh, air racer of the day. Since they were there, and Benny Howard, the guy that built this airplane, was forbidden from pylon racing by this airline job, uh, Harold Newman, who was a friend of his and had raced some of uh, Benny Howard's other racing designs, decided to race this in the Thompson Trophy, which was a closed course pylon race. And not only did it win the Bendix race that year, but it won the Thompson race that year, and it was called the Benny Howard races. It was, it was the year of Benny Howard and set Benny Howard and, uh, and uh, Harold Newman on to uh, a great career of fame and fortune in the racing business. Uh, the winnings from that race funded the start of the Howard Aircraft Company in Chicago, and they built the D uh, Howard DGA 8, 11, and 15, which were very, very uh, desirable airplanes and uh, they built those through the balance of uh, World War II, and then the company was, uh, was shut down. But the Howard DGA-15 is uh, still an incredibly capable airplane today. Mr. Mulligan is and was powered by a Pratt & Whitney R1340. So that's 1,340 cubic inches. It has nine cylinders in a radial configuration. Uh, the stock 1340 that we see today on T6s and things like that has a 10 uh, to 1 blower ratio, which means the supercharger impeller turns 10 times engine speed. Um, the uh, one that was on Mr. Mul the original Mr. Mulligan was 14 times engine speed to allow it to fly in the, uh, in the low 20,000 range. Uh, you know, the magic of true airspeed says that for indicated airspeed, you uh, pick up 2% uh, of uh, indicated airspeed for every thousand feet you climb. So if you can maintain p the same power at uh, 20,000 feet as you can at sea level, you can go 40% faster on the same amount of power. That's a rule of thumb, but it's pretty accurate. And so uh, typically racers of the day were racing close to the ground where they had more power available, but by putting a bigger blower supercharger in this airplane, it allowed them to fly at higher altitudes where they achieved better true air speeds. So Mr. Mulligan really was kind of a revolutionary airplane in that the racers of the day were typically overpowered, underwinged, uh, open cockpit uh, airplanes with miserable flying uh, uh, characteristics. This airplane has a cabin, you know, would have had heat and was again really the, a, a modern looking airplane by the standards of the day compared to these purpose-built racers. And uh, it was really revolutionary in that regard. Uh, by, even by today's standards, this airplane has a, a pretty comfortable cockpit and, uh, you know, and, and goes cross country at normal power settings, burning 30 gallon an hour at 200 knots at 8,500 feet. Uh, when you consider that the airliners of the day were Ford tri-motors that went 90 to 100 miles an hour, this is the equivalent of, uh, of the SST. When you look at this airplane from the outside with this massive engine, you would say it's incredibly blind. But that's really not true. As you, you can see the curvature of the top of the instrument panel, the, the, uh, the glare shield, 
affords really remarkably good visibility for a uh, 600 horsepower uh, tailwheel airplane. And uh, again, it's, it was uh, an incredibly uh, well thought out design. So a lot of times I'll hear people at air shows say, what does the R mean? Well, if you look at uh, vintage airplanes, you'll see an NR, you'll see an NC, or you'll see an NX. Well, NR meant racing. This airplane was certified in the racing category. NX would be experimental, and NC stands for commercial. And uh, commercial would be what we would consider today to be a standard category airplane. So if you see historic pictures of Mr. Mulligan, you'll always notice it had big black stripes down the side. Well, the airplane was so incredibly overboosted and overfueled that it had oil and uh, exhaust smoke down the side. And Jim Yonkin, who built this airplane, he loved those stripes because he thought it made, uh, made it look historic. So it's always a balance in this airplane between cleaning it up and making it clean or leaving the, uh, the uh, exhaust uh, stripes and a little bit of oil, which gives it part of its character. One of the unique things about the uh, uh, Mr. Mulligan and the Howards is they have this flat square top of the fuselage coming off the top of the wing. And uh, if you step back and look at this airplane, it is reminiscent of a monocoupe. And uh, Benny said that he uh, designed it this way uh, because he got tired of looking at monocoupes from behind in the races. And so uh, uh, it has a monocoupe look and feel to it. And uh, Jim went on after he built this replica, they went eat one step farther and they made a cross breed essentially between Mr. Mulligan and a monocoupe and they called it the Mulligan. And they, he built, I think, four or five uh, kits that were ultimately finished of a, of a Mulligan, which is a two seat airplane with a 985 on it and just absolutely a fun airplane to fly. Little bitty stubby wings, goes fast, and, and really fun to fly. I got involved in this airplane many, many years ago because I'd come to know Jim Yonkin because of his autopilot business, True Track. And uh, Jim and I became fast friends, and after that I got to become friends with his grandson, Matt, who flies the Twin Beach in the air show acts. And uh, as Jim got up in years, uh, I started flying this airplane. It was in the museum in uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas, and just really wasn't being flown very much. And so I'd go down and get the airplane and take Jim and his wife, and we'd go to fly-ins or something like that. And, uh, and I really come to appreciate what this airplane was and what it could do. And I like airplanes that have a story to tell, and this airplane's got some incredible stories to tell. And when Jim passed away, uh, his grandson Matt was insistent that I buy the airplane from the estate, which I did. And so uh, we're gonna take it back out on the air show. We've done a few air shows with it. And we're gonna, I don't have a lot of time, but we're gonna get this airplane back out so people can see, see it and learn some of the exciting history of air racing in the 20s and 30s, what we call the golden age of air racing. And it's just a, it's an honor to be a custodian of this airplane at this point in history.